Stephen. Doug Norman's back on. Yes. So I'm, I'm going to give it to um, Star. What would you say? Should I give it to 605 or 60? Yeah, 605. Yeah, we can give it a couple of minutes. Perfect. Um, so in the meantime, yeah, I introduced you all, but I guess you both know Tracy. So Tracy uh, was the executive director of Yes Carolina, and then we had the exciting merge earlier this year with ECM. Uh, my name is Alicia Madur. I am the new program manager for Yes Carolina, so I'm very excited to be here. Um, I just started diving into everything entrepreneurship in the course, so um, I actually have a lot to learn in this journey for myself, so I'm super excited to um, hear from Dave and David and you all. Um, and then also we have Star, who is our director of after school programs and summer camps at ECM. Yeah, I, like Alicia, I have a lot to learn. So I'm <laughs> excited to be part of this too. So thank you, David, 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 for doing this. We have a lot to learn too. So uh, <laughs> learning never stops. I learn more from my I learn more from my kids than uh, they learn from me sometimes. So I think, uh, you know, on balance, it's good. <clears throat> All right, it is 6.05. So I'm going to go ahead and get started, Dave and David, are you all okay with that? Yep. All right. So we're so excited to be here. Um, I wanted to introduce you all to Dave and David, the reason why we're here. Um, Dave and David are both educators and they came to us uh, this past summer to help run a pilot program that we had um, at two of our summer camps with ECM. Um, and these are our summer STEAM camps. So it's focused on arts integration. And Dave and David worked with high school students and taught them entrepreneurial education in the mornings. And then the students worked with the campers in the afternoon. So it really tied in the arts with entrepreneurship. Um, and that was the pilot model of what we did. And it went incredibly. Um, the kids got to present their business ideas at the end of the summer. Um, and it was a huge hit, but um, Today, the focus is going to be how to integrate arts into your entrepreneurial class. Um, but I'll let Dave and David introduce themselves a bit further. David, you want to go first? I'm um, sure, yeah. I'm um, teaching over at uh, East Cooper uh, Center for Advanced Studies now. I've been at Wando for, I guess, 12 years prior to that. And um, uh, this is probably my 10th year teaching uh, entrepreneurship. And, uh, you know, I find that my kids always respond better when they've got something uh, that's hands-on. And that's one of the beauties of uh, this class is that there's a lot of choice and there's a lot of opportunity for the kids to express themselves uh, individually in terms of the businesses that they choose. And also in terms of, uh, you know, a lot of the projects that we do in class. So um, looking forward to sharing some ideas with you guys and also uh, hearing some of the things that you guys are doing. Uh, my name is Dave Smith, and um, I was a classroom teacher for six years um, in early childhood. Um, I taught preschool all the way through third grade. And then um, I was approached by a local business owner to help him um, start a nonprofit organization with an entrepreneurship focus. And so I ran that um, and was the primary um, program delivery uh, person for, gosh, seven, eight years. Um, and through that process, we developed um, our own curriculum for, for teaching kids how to start micro businesses and kind of look at um, applying standards um, in unique ways. Um, and that's really kind of the, the thing that I wanted to focus on is thinking about the practical application. Um, seeing, the, seeing the light go on in students' eyes when they see how what they're learning applies to the real world is kind of where my passion lies. So. Um, arts are a really good way to do that, um, and so I'm looking forward to, to uh, having a dialogue with y'all tonight where we kind of talk about how we can do that more often. Awesome. So we're going to start <clears throat> off with a little activity. Um, 
Dave, do you want to walk us through? So we're going to do a little scavenger hunt. Um, so we are going to get one point for every item that you're able to track down. Um, I'll give you, I don't know, what do you think is a good number? 30 seconds to track think, it down? I think 30 seconds is fair, and I will okay. <laughs> run a timer on my phone. Perfect. So Alicia is not going to be able to play because she's going to be keeping score. But Star and David, you're welcome to join. Um, and Angelia, is that correct? Angelia and Norma. Um, and uh, Alicia, you said you told me uh, a little whisper that there might be a prize involved. Yes, we do have a couple prizes. Um, there's some really fun board games. So one of them is Pit and the other board game is Disrupt. So it's great games to play with your students in the classroom. Um, so can definitely be utilized by um, each of you. You guys are yes, uh, Carolina folks. Have you all used those games before? No, okay, they're really, really fun. Yeah, they're really Disruptus, fun. Disruptus is really, really cool. I use it every time I do an entrepreneurship program. Um, and Pitt's really fun too. My, my, my kids, my personal kids love, love playing it. So I think you'll like that. All right, so uh, we'll get started. Like I said, you get one point for every item that you're able to track down in the 30 second time period. The winner gets their choice of prize maybe. How about that? Yeah, Alicia? that works great. Yeah. Okay. All right, so the first item is something from another country. If you can track something down, Something from another country. You have 30 <laughs> seconds starting now. <clears throat> is that made in China, David? <laughs> Philippines. Oh, yes. and Julia, that um, is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Your little grayed out or uh, fringed out or on the edges, but it looks yeah, like a Give piece me of a art. second. I have it on. Um, I have my filter in. Yeah. But give me a second. Yeah, I'd love to see that. <clears throat> All right, our thirty seconds are up. So it looks like Angelia won that round. Starred was. Is on her way. Did we? What? What is that? Oh, is that? Is that the Canadian five dollar bill? No. Look at this! Look what I got. What are the <laughs> odds of that? Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> I forgot. That's right. crazy. Oh, that's so pretty. Yeah, and Julia, that's beautiful. This is my painting that I uh, was given to me from another country. So I just, I, I love it. 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 Oh, it's, it's, it is gorgeous. So I actually jerked it off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on, hold on to that because it might be useful later. Uh, Norma, did you find something? I'm sorry, I didn't have time to look for it. That's okay. a, it's a tough That's one. Right. That's you'll a tough get, one for you'll 30 get the next seconds. One. You'll get the next one. All right. All right. Uh, David found something made in the Philippines. What was that? Oh, uh, it's. Um... Another label writing. maker. Right. <laughs> Very creative. <laughs> All right. All right. The second thing, um, a trophy, a ribbon, or a medal, some sort of some sort of celebration piece. All right. I'm starting the timer now. Nice. Oh, wow. oh wow! Very <laughs> fitting. <laughs> Does that work? That's perfect. Of course that works. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Look. Oh, oh my god! Norma got, oh got it too. <laughs> yeah, star. Star. Everybody won this round. Oh, it's tangled. Hold on. I'll show you mine. All right. All right. And who wants to show and tell? I think that sounds great. What would you get? I have my Award of Excellence Teacher of the Month. Well done. At Fort High School. Way to go. Way to go. So you have a whole a whole bundle of things. Oh, oh, they, yeah. were all, <laughs> they were all tangled. They're they're Cooper's hockey medals. All right on. Perfect. 
Oh, so proud mom case. moment for sure. <laughs> David, did you were you able to track something down? I couldn't find anything exactly that was an award or a ribbon, but uh, I've got a little bronze sculpture of someone doing art. So I figure uh, that's creative. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. All right, and this is from this is a this is you're gonna you're gonna think this is cool. 1998. Um, I was part of a world championship team for Odyssey of the Mind. Um, we won gold. We won gold in uh, the college division of, in the entire world. Uh, it wow. was at, it was at Disney World, um, so we were pretty proud of that. Now, before you celebrate me too much, there were only like seven teams in the whole world that did the college division. So, <laughs> <laughs> but if you know anything about Odyssey of the Mind, it's it's worldwide. There's thousands of schools that participate. So. It sounds like a really cool thing, but college is kind of like the black sheep of the family. There's only a few teams, but I still am really proud of it. It's on my wall. So that's, that's cool. awesome. <clears throat> All right. I think everybody got a point there. Yep. Um, how about this? How about a musical instrument? Can you find me a musical instrument? All you can right, get creative I'm if you'd like. starting the timer right now. Feel free to get creative if you don't have one handy. <clears throat> Yeah, that's a very um, meta question because anything can be a musical instrument, Dave. Nice. Look at the keyboard. Well done. Engine. Oh, Engine. keyboard. Definitely a point. That's got like, that's, that's a monster there. You could do some cool stuff with that thing. When Angelique, you have you children play? and you don't get rid of things, you tend to accumulate. <laughs> yeah, you get to win prizes. <laughs> I have one. <laughs> All right. You can get creative. Can you think of anything that you could use that's around you that could be used as a as a musical instrument? A spoon. Nice. So here's mine. <laughs> it's my son's um, little piano from when he was a baby. I guess that counts. Makes noise. <clears throat> uh, right. David, did you find anything? I got the uh, got the spoons. Oh, the spoons! Yeah, perfect. <laughs> or what'd you find? Found a jingle bell. Nice, that's perfect. <laughs> Norma, what'd you find? I didn't have anything. Okay, all right. I didn't have anything. <laughs> and we saw the the mega keyboard, Angelia had. <laughs> nice job, y'all. Oh, what do we think, Star um, um, or uh, Alicia? A few more. Yeah. Oh, I said, right. yeah. Let's How about this? More. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> How about something from the beach? Something from the beach. I am starting the timer now. Something from the beach. Very nice. Cool. Love Julie, it. Are you sure Dave didn't leak to you the right? She's crushing this. <laughs> she's crushing this. There it goes. Her timer. All right, what'd y'all find? <laughs> Norma, I love it. The sandals. <laughs> That's really smart. Absolutely. It's perfect for the beach. <laughs> and Angelie, you had a necklace. Nice. A lay. Nice. Star, what do you have? Sand? I have sand. And a salt shaker, which is nice. really super shaker. confusing. <laughs> that would be a really terrible. You don't want to mess that one up, right? To, to be fair, it's my last shaker of salt. Oh, nice. <laughs> Jimmy Buffett action. David, what's that? What do you got? That's a sandpiper. Nice. Is it, is it, a, is it wooden? Is it wooden? Uh, it is wooden. The decoy. This is my David, you really show. think outside the box. <laughs> well, I, uh, oh, I got wow. this in the Bahamas. Gosh, probably 30, 20 years ago. 25 years ago. <clears throat> All right. All right. Let's do a couple more. Everybody's doing really well. Let's get let's get something challenging here. All right, we're gonna get a little a little creative here. Something precious. Find something precious. Starting the timer. Oh. Have you used? Oh, 
Precious is leaving. <laughs> we we clocked it, David. Okay, good. Oh. Go my precious. <laughs> and there the timer goes. Oh, uh, come here. <laughs> we saw a precious hand. <laughs> he won't come on screen. All right, Norma. What is, what is your precious item? This is my mom and dad. Both of them are deceased, but they are very precious still. Oh, too. that's beautiful. <laughs> very nice. Norma or Angelia? Oh, Angelia, you're on mute. This is uh, past precious to me. This is my wedding bouquet. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And this is my husband's handkerchief that he carried. My handkerchief is in here that I carried, as well as the garter that he took off of me. Wow. That's amazing. Talk about precious. That's amazing. Yeah, that is, I couldn't think of, that's, that's the definition. Wow. Well done. Well done. Bonus points for y'all. All right. Last round. Oh, let me see. I've got a whole list here. Let's think of something really good. Something really good. Everybody is doing so well. Um, let's do something. All right. A framed piece of art or a sculpture? A framed piece of art or a sculpture? I told you that was going to come in handy, Angelia. A framed piece of art or a sculpture? <clears throat> nice david you got it you like birds i see um my um stepfather-in-law was a wildlife artist and so was my mother-in-law and um we um we brought this back from florida that's great all right who else has something Well, it's not actually framed, but it's, it says, okay. the Lord, with all your heart, my favorite scripture, and it's on board, and one of my students gave it to me. Oh, that's a beautiful piece oh, of that's art. so nice. <laughs> that's beautiful, yeah. Angelia, did, oh, you showed us yours already. Oh, yes. That's a double, double pointer. Um, how about you, Star? What do you got? When well, my sons made this, I don't remember which one. <laughs> <laughs> That's really nice, though. Isn't I like that it. terrible? <laughs> All right, this is mine. This is from a, he used to live here in town. Um, his name is Ben Timpson. Um, he, he creates um, pieces of art from found objects. So this is a flower petal, and this is a snake skin. And this is a crow feather. So if you look really close, it's a lady playing the piano or an organ. But if you look really close, that you can see that it's made from found objects. He's re really, really oh, talented. That's so cool. He used to teach with me um, at, here in town at Meeting Street Academy when we taught there together. All right. So how did we do? Um, everyone did a great job. Um, in first place, we have Angelia. Yay, Angelia. Hey. And this is Norva came in second place. <laughs> so um, ladies, I will, um, so I'll send you all a picture of the two board games and Julia, you pick which one you want and then Norma, I'll mail you the other one. They're both awesome. So they'll definitely be useful. Thank you. Of course. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, and we're going to segue into David. Do you want to talk to us about how this 
scavenger hunt is relevant? Absolutely. Um, uh, if you take a look at uh, the objects that you've gathered around yourself right now, just think about like how you might combine those to make something new. Just like uh, the um, last painting that uh, Dave was showing us that was combined from other objects. And one of the things that I do and I like to do with my kids is to um, do something very similar to that when we're starting to talk about the idea generation and getting into uh, creating business ideas uh, and developing those. And so, you know, one of the things that we'll do is I'll give them, uh, you know, some choice from a whole bunch of random assorted uh, miscellaneous stuff that I've got laying around the classroom. And it's their challenge uh, to come up with a uh, product uh, that they can make out of the objects that I give them. They make a mock-up of the product. And then uh, we, we use that to sort of talk about the four P's of marketing and kind of get into um, to that as well. Uh, so um, let me just go ahead and share some things here with you on screen and I'll um, walk you through a couple of things that we do. But you know, the thing about it is, is that kids, uh, they look at, um, look at objects and they look at um, uh, things in life very differently than adults do. And that's one of the things that's great about sort of getting into art integration is, is that it brings us back into that sort of mindset. And it's as beneficial for me, I think, as it is for the kids, uh, because, you know, I get to see things in a different perspective. And there's all these great ideas sort of bouncing around the classroom uh, when you uh, start to open things up like that. And, you know, the kids come up with some pretty incredible stuff. It reminds me of um, my daughter um, when uh, she was like three years old. We were, um, my, you know, uh, she and my wife were in the car. And um, it was a windy day. And my wife, you know, just sort of, you know, wanting to talk with, talk with her about uh, what was going on outside, said, um, well, um, well, my daughter said, uh, mommy, the trees are dancing. You know, she's looking at the trees and they're swaying in the breeze and it looks like they're dancing. Uh, so my wife says, well, what do you think makes them dance? Uh, and she was expecting the, the literal answer, the wind, right? Because uh, that's the grown up response. Uh, and our daughter, three years old, said, the music, obviously, you know, thinking, you know, of things in the way that a child does, that, you know, the, the trees were hearing the music, it was making them happy, and they were dancing along to the tunes that we're listening to on the radio. Uh, so, um, kids look at things and, and view things very differently, and sometimes that can be very, very freeing. Uh, so, as we're sort of working into um, um, integrating art into the entrepreneurship curriculum, what we want to do is engage those creative minds that the kids all have, uh, and bring that into the classroom, and uh, use those gifts and those skills and those talents that the kids have and that, that novel approach of looking at things um, uh, to, to bring them into our world of business. Um, when we're doing our business presentations and doing our PowerPoints, we always start with the problem. And one of the problems that teachers have in the classroom is we have students who, you know, sometimes are easily distracted. They've got their phones. They've got all kinds of things going on. They might be disengaged. Um, you know, you ask the kids sometimes, well, you know, uh, how do you decide to be here? And they're like, I don't know, guidance put me in here. Um, and they don't necessarily see where the benefit is coming or what they're going to do. And, you know, sometimes they're just somewhere else. They've checked out. So the challenge that we have really is to engage them and get them interested in our class and, and, and bring them in. And, you know, this is where the solution uh, comes in for engaging creative minds. Um, and we tap into that creativity that the kids have. Uh, and get them thinking, get them using what's in their head uh, and seeing things differently. We get happier students, we get more engagement, we get more fun all around. Uh, we get to build stronger relationships with those kids because they see that we care and that we're interested in what they come up with and their ideas. And, you know, the kids then start to buy in uh, to what we're doing and they get interested in, in what we've got to offer. And the result is we get better at grades and outcomes. And as adults, uh, you know, we learn and we grow uh, too, as much as the kids do or not. So um, our challenge really is to foster creativity uh, in the classroom from beginning to end uh, and um, to develop a repertoire of projects that, uh, that foster that creative um, impulse that the kids have and, you know, encourage that experiential learning. Uh, so when I think about like the different phases of entrepreneurship uh, instruction, uh, we, we start off 
uh, by building some foundational knowledge uh, that the kids need to have about business and what business is. And then we kind of work into generating some business ideas and developing and refining a plan. And, you know, we talk about growth and exit strategies over the course of the semester. And then by the time that we're at the end and we're ready to do our presentations, we've got a really develop, well-developed business plan that sort of follows the template that uh, Yes Carolina and uh, ECM have. Um, so when I'm starting in that, uh, that very first part, one of the things that I, I like to do is, you know, give them a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, like we're talking about, and see what they come up with. And so, you know, these are some of the ideas that my students have come up with over time. Uh, and uh, you can kind of see what they had to work with. It's not much. You know, it's very simple stuff. Styrofoam bowls, uh, you know, bamboo skewers, popsicle sticks, and a little bit of duct tape makes a tailgate grill with uh, patriotic flags that plugs into your hitch. And you can take it to the tailgate with you. And then afterwards, you don't have to worry about packing it up. Just tow it on off right behind you. Um, and, you know, that's a solution to a problem that they have, you know, how do I get my tailgate and my grilling and all that stuff done at the football game. Um, I had some students who said, well, you know, the thing about pizza is when you get it and it's hot and you get it right out of the oven and you cut it, it's really, really too hot to eat. And you got all the melty cheese and everything like that that you're dealing with and it, you got to wait for it to cool or burn your mouth. So why not a pizza cutter with a cooling fan on it? And as you cut the uh, pizza, it's blowing it off for you. So it's kind of cooling down so you can eat it right away. Um, or, you know, um, one of my students was like, you know, uh, wanting to sort of adapt some technology uh, into it. And so, uh, you know, she developed this uh, fly cam spy camera. It looks like a fly, uh, buzzes around and you can use it remotely and uh, use it like a drone uh, for like a spy cam, which is kind of cool. So the kids come up with all kinds of different ideas and you give them a cardboard box and a little bit of construction paper and, um, and tell them have at it. Uh, and they come up with all kinds of different ideas. Now, um, besides the creation uh, that's going on, you know, I like to have them sort of work in and incorporate some of the core materials that we're using. So this is a great opportunity for them to go ahead and present that product, describe who it's marketed towards, why it is that they would want to buy it, and then also they can go through the four P's like the product, price, place, promotion, how we're going to sell this, what we're going to charge for it. And that opens us up for all kinds of discussions about how companies set prices, how we decide to do distribution, what channels we use, how we go about advertising and promoting. There's so many different ways that you can take this at that point. Um, but it all comes from their ideas. Uh, and, you know, you're referencing back to what they're doing and you, you questioning them and asking them, well, you know, where do you think would be like the best place to promote that? Um, you know, where are you going to find your market? Yeah. And so the kids really kind of get into it and um, uh, it's a really cool, fun thing to do. Um, there are just like, you know, you've got kids that who, you know, can take something simple as construction paper and start to like build things out of it. You have other kids that have other intelligences as well. And so, what you need to do is get to know what your students' interests are, because every class is different. Um, and you just have to kind of use what works within the class. I mean, I've had some classes where I've had a couple of kids that like were really into rap and they wanted to do a rap battle. So I had them do a rap battle about the four Ps. Um, and I kind of worked that curriculum in and had them you know, create something that kind of you know, brings that, um, uh, you know, the core of the curriculum into it, but they do it in a different way. You know, you can have them do role play and uh, skits. I've had some kids that are drama kids before uh, in my class and they really get into that. Um, almost all the kids get into doing videos and commercials. They love that. And it's a great thing to do. And it also teaches them some video editing and some production skills. And, um, you know, it's a good opportunity to kind of talk about how commercials are put together and how you have to have a hook something that's gonna draw people in, um, that you know, people are more interested in seeing a commercial if they're gonna be engaged or um, if it's gonna be interesting or creative or funny. So you know, we kind of bring all those sorts of things in. Uh, photography assignments, collages, uh, scavenger hunts, uh, culinary arts even. Uh, I've had some culinary kids and um, you know, they wanted to do something a little different. So I had them, my students like demonstrate different products that they believe in, you know, things that they like. I had 
a couple of girls out there demonstrating a cheese, straightening each other's hair. I've had girls uh, or guys in the class that uh, have um, brought in, um, what do you call those, the shave ice machines. Mm -hmm. And we made snow cones for the class. And, you know, I had someone demonstrate a waffle maker uh, and we made waffles for the class. And so it's a great opportunity to bring some things in, have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, and also, uh, you know, kind of make it into a sales pitch and they're learning presentation skills and they're developing uh, a lot of other things that they don't even know that they're doing. They just think they're just, you know, making some waffles and having a good time. Uh, so uh, as you kind of engage those, it's like really cool. And, you know, then we get to the point in the, um, the class where we're started, starting to wind down and we're starting to think about, well, you know, what is it once you've got this business idea and you've got it developed, you know, how do you deal with it? How do you make it grow? And so one of the things we talk about is franchising. And we talk about the power of franchising out your system. That if you've got a really good system that, uh, that is marketable and, is, and can be rep replicated, can be scaled up, that you can create a company that basically licenses that idea and that system out. And you can generate you know, income from that without even actually having to start or run the business yourself. You bring other entrepreneurs in uh, to fold to the fold to do that. So I have them research uh, some different franchises, and they build a visual aid that uh, represents that business um, visually, and also has uh, all these different facts about the franchise. You know what they charge for franchise fees, how much it costs to build to build one out, and um, then they go ahead and present that in class with their visual aids. So you know there's a lot of different things that we can do with our curriculum. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be dull and dry, um, but, um, but, you know, we can have them do things that are artistic and creative and that they can have some fun with while they're doing it, and it's going to make it so much better for us, and that's one of the things that I really love about teaching this class is just seeing that and seeing the smiles on their faces as they're um, building that self-confidence and knowledge and, um, you know, learning what their own strengths are and, um, you, know, uh, you know, coming up with some creative ways to solve some problems that I wouldn't have, you know, even thought of sometimes uh, and just seeing the world in a different way, which is, I think, one of the beautiful things about this course is it can be so many different things. So anyway, that's, uh, that's sort of my take on it. David, thank you so much. Um, and if you wouldn't mind, if you could, download that PowerPoint. I can send that to um, everyone, also folks who can make it tonight. I think that's a very helpful, um, just kind of concise way to engage students. I can do that. And I can also, if you want, I can like send some of the um, instructions that I use for some of the different projects and things like that that I've done over time. Um, Absolutely. You know, if that's useful to anyone, it, you know, again, you can always adapt and modify and do different things. Absolutely. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So when I do my programming, um, typically it's class based. So um, it's less individualized. Um, so a lot of times we have to talk about group decision making, you know, getting feedback from other people, receiving that feedback and kind of utilizing it. And so I wanted to do an activity with you that's kind of an arts integration activity that also kind of um, you can front load this to kind of talk about in partnerships, you have to, you have to take what someone else has and build off on it. There's a, um, there's a concept in improv called yes and, um, which is, um, I'd consider art, uh, an art form, definitely theater. Um, and so when you do improv, you take someone else's idea and you build on it. So um, we're going to get into groups of two. And um, Alicia, are you willing to share that? Oh, you did. So does everybody see the link in the chat? where it says HTTPS jamboard.google.com. So if you click on that link, it's gonna open up, it's called a Jamboard, it's a Google um, app, and it's gonna allow us to work together. Um, so Angelia and Norma, if you guys are willing to be partners, um, and then we can have, um, David and I can be partners, and then Star and Alicia, if you two are willing to be partners. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that everybody great. feeling okay about that? Okay. So it's, this is called a scribble drawing. Uh, if you've never done anything like this, basically, um, if we go into the Jamboard um, and together. Dave, 
while yes, you're doing this, I would say um, if one of us, and I'm happy to do it, uh, shares the screen just so from the Zoom call we can see in live time um, the Jamboard. I can do that. Perfect. Do you, do you want to do it or do you want me to? I can do it, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And then you and David can <coughs> show the activity. So okay. looking at the Jamboard here, we're going to go over here to the first one. Yeah, you let me know when you're ready. Go ahead. Okay. So David is going to be my partner and I'm going to go first. I'm going to draw a little scribble. So art is made up, visual arts, you know, typically are made of lines and shapes and you can get into other things, shading and, and uh, things like that. But um, I had an, uh, an artist friend of mine tell me that it's just lines and shapes. So um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give David some lines and shapes and then he's going to turn it into something fantastic. So I'm going to do a little bit of this. And Dave, are you on which page? I'm on, are you? Page, oh, okay. I'm on page one. Perfect, I just saw it. Okay, so I did a little scribble for David. And then what he's gonna do is he's gonna take that scribble and he's gonna transform it into something unique. Uh, cool, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm seeing a, a beach in the sun right now. Yeah, looks like he's going to continue. <laughs> nice little sailboat. I love that. Okay, David, are you finished? Yep, uh, your turn now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, what I want, what I want us to do is, um, so as you can see, he took my scribble and circle, and he turned it into a, a nice ocean scene. And then, so we're gonna give you um, a minute to to kind of uh, once you done once one of you does the scribble, the other person's gonna have a chance to turn it into something, um, and then we're gonna switch places. So now David is gonna scribble something underneath underneath that. And then I'm going to transform it into something. <coughs> so David, if you're willing to give me a little scribble underneath uh, the ocean scene. Very cool. So um, I'm gonna take over from there. Let's see. I think I want to do something like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I can probably bet a uh, million dollars that David was not intending to draw a spider, a Black Widow <laughs> spider. Am I correct? Absolutely. Right. So it's, it's funny when, if you do this with your students, you can, you can definitely kind of debrief this and say, raise your hand if, if your partner drew exactly what you thought they were going to draw. And then you can kind of get some chuckles about, uh, about that. And then you can say, well, in business, it's the same thing. You can come to them with a, a start of an idea. And if you come from a place of positivity and kind of, and kind of partnership, then, then you can build on each other's ideas and come up with something better than you could have ever thought of individually. So um, I'm going to give you all a chance to do this now. So let's have on page two, so group two, let me come back to the Zoom real quick. Um, let's have... Angelia and Norma be group two. So you all can work um, amongst yourselves about who wants to be first to scribble. And then um, you'll have, you know, a minute or two to kind of re uh, relate to that scribble. And then, um, then you'll switch places. So whoever did the, whoever did the scribbling the first time will we'll do, we'll take the scribble from the other person <laughs> and build on it. So there we go. 
So I'm, I'm just going to kind of uh, observe and then we'll, I'd like to hear from each group kind of when we're done, um, kind of that debrief about whether we thought things turned out the way we expected them to. But any questions before we get started? Now, how do I get back to group two? <laughs> At the top, there's a little uh, gray uh, box with, okay. with um, it says two out of five. Okay. Just click on those arrows to the left or right to get to your, to your specific one. And I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing just because I realize it probably is confusing because <laughs> everyone's going to look at their own screen. Perfect. Okay, so I need to go back. Now that yeah, just click on that here. link. Yep. Okay. Star, do you want to go first? Now, how did, you know, I've never done this before. How do I start drawing? <laughs> That's a great question. So on the far left, there's a little pen button. So right now it's on the arrow. So go up two to that little pen button and click on it. Where it says Zoom. Uh, I'm sorry, are you in the Jamboard? Yeah, and I see group okay. two, Angelina and Norma. Yep, okay, so go clear to the far left of your screen. There should uh -huh. be a little, a little key with some tabs. There's a pen and an eraser and an arrow and a, a sticky note. So in, in that area at the top, if you click on that pen button, you'll be able to draw. Okay. You see that? I, I don't know about Norma's, but mine is only in view mode. Yeah, I can't see a pen and a, I don't see that. Oh, um, I am so sorry about that. Let me just make sure. <gasps> okay. You all should be good, and I apologize. There was just a little setting that blocked you all from, but you should be able to go ahead and draw now. If not, you can maybe click out of it and click back in. Maybe that'll help. Okay. Because I still don't see the little thing. It's okay. Click back in. Technology, right? Okay, I see it now. Okay. Yes, yeah, so just try a little scribble, see what happens. Okay, Angelina, you Sorry. did that. Am I to go? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, are you finished, Angelina? Yep. Yes, ma'am. I'm finished. So <laughs> nice. What a nice sunrise or sunset. Oh. At least that's what I see. It could be a hat. <laughs> Well, if you've read The Little Prince, it could be an elephant inside of a snake, right? Know what they do on that? <laughs> All right, Star, go ahead. All right, so Angelia and Norma, you can switch places. Whoever did the scribble the first time can. Oh, you're still drawing. I see. Go ahead. Whoa, we got some fanciness over here, y'all. Alicia and Star. <laughs> Wait, so if I finished, if I went second, then I go first now? Yep, now you give Star the scribble. Okay, gotcha. All right. Just underneath the fish. Oh, wow, look at that, y'all. Angelia so, Norma. Norma. <laughs> now Norma, it's a little. You want to go, go first, Miss Norma, down at the bottom? Okay, so now I need to give you one. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Go ahead, Star. Yeah. That looks like a kitty right before it pounces on you. Trying to make you. it weird. <laughs> Whoa, that's awesome. I I know where I would go with that, Alicia, if that were mine. Really? Mm-hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to put anything in Star's head, but that's I know where I'd go with it. Wait a minute, I lost. <laughs> okay. Oh, someone with a, a very very unfortunate haircut. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. I don't know, Angelina. I just put some. <laughs> no, that's great. This is a good start. I'm curious to see where she goes with it. Okay. I'm finished, Angelina. I think I made it hard for you. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, I lost my face. 
I was, we, I do this with my youngest son. This is how we pass time in restaurants. I can oh, tell I you've got that. some experience in this. <laughs> it's so much fun, no matter how old you are. Oh <laughs> yeah. For sure. And you can see as an entrepreneurship teacher, how this is applicable to your lessons, um, especially if you're talking about partnerships or even just brainstorming. If, if you're in brainstorming mode where you're in product development phase, you could definitely say, you know, um, you know, write your, you know, five passions on the plate, which is something that, that's in the curriculum. And then just listening to other people kind of give you feedback on that. This is a great starter activity for that because then you, then you have somewhere to kind of feed off of. So after you've done the five passions, you can, and had some feedback from your, you know, the other kids in the class, you can say, remember when we did the scribble drawing, this is a lot like that. What we want you to do is take those ideas and run with them. See what you can come up with that, that you know, you wouldn't have been able to come up with on your own. Um, and there's, you know, using the arts to do, to kind of illustrate points is, is, you know, really powerful, I think. Right, these are really good. Angelia and Norma, are y'all finished? Yeah, yeah, I guess I'm, I guess I'm finished. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, that's good. So, so let's, let's just take a minute because I know we're getting close to our, our time, but um, I'd like to kind of hear some feedback from especially Angelia and Norma about how, what this activity was like for you. It was good. It was, it made me think. It made me, you know, put my thoughts together and it was, it was very, I like it. It was very creative. <laughs> That's the goal, right? Is it something you might use with your students? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I really like the peeking bunny or whatever that is. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> we, we got three people and then some lines. What? Talk to me about the lines. The, the lines, the lines is the because it was supposed to be originally like a house, but yeah. I, my I lost my pin, so <laughs> it just ended up being like a little hump. Okay. So I just said, okay, it still could be a peak and bunny. Yeah. You know, still following what Miss Norma had done, it still could be a peak and bunny, um, on the grass, and this is the roadway, and this is the people looking at yeah. the little bunny. I love that. Cool perspective too. That's the only thing I can think of. No, that's like fantastic. It. That's fantastic. That's I love that. It's cool because what you've done is you've developed one big picture out of the two yeah. two separate scribbles. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, oh, Star and Alicia, do you have anything to share about your fantasticness? Oh wow. Oh, Angelia. Well, yes. Yeah. No, I just want to say I have to leave right. because. I have to host a Zoom meeting with my students. Oh, nice. Well, hey, do you have any? Do you have any questions then before you have to leave? Uh, no, uh, uh, I just love everything I see, and it's good seeing every. Well, Dave, because I've worked with Dave before, and Norma. So, and that uh, star, nice to meet you. Nice to nice meet you, to Dave. Meet you. The, the other Dave, not the <laughs> Dave. <laughs> it's very nice. And to meet Alicia, you. finally, it's good to put a name with a face. So, Absolutely. thank you all so much. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, Miss Angelia. And uh, I'll email you about your prize. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye. Have a good day. Thank you. Awesome. Um, I would say for us, the activity, I mean, for myself, the first scribble that Star did, I was, I immediately saw a fish and that just connected the dots huh. for me, just seeing that fin. But then when I started the scribble, I was like, hmm, let me try and mess her up. And yeah. <laughs> nice. I just tried to be really just random. And then of course, like it just immediately looked like a face. And I just think that's so interesting because it's like, even when you are just trying to go all over the place, someone could see that and be like, oh, this is, mm -hmm. this is some hair and a face. Yeah, yeah. Star, do you have um, anything to share? Well, to your point, Dave, I love that analogy because when I made my scribble, I didn't really have anything in mind but I certainly wasn't thinking of a fish. And so I, I love the idea of, um, of talking to students about how you can present an idea or some, some form of an idea and somebody can really take it and run in a totally different direction. Or even if you're running in the same direction, just make it so much better. So yeah. I, I love this analogy. Thank you for sharing.
Oh, it's my pleasure. It's really fun. I do it with almost every group that I have because um, it's really nice, especially when we talk about brainstorming. It's, it's a nice, even if it just gets the creative juices flowing, if that's all it does, it's still useful. So, mm -hmm. well, Awesome. Well, awesome. We have a few minutes left. So um, Norma, you are our one <laughs> lovely person here. If you had any questions or um, anything to share for David and David or all of us. Um, well, yeah, I am. Um, as I said, I am not a, I'm not in the classroom, but I do um, summer camps. This is since I retired, I've done five. Um, because I've done two in Charleston. Um, I do one for the Sanders family and I did one for them this, um, this, this year. It was good. Um, I do them in Columbia and I also have a organization called the Young CEOs and Leaders. So we do continue to meet. We meet every month. We do activities together. We do, we meet with business people so they can continue to do their businesses. And um, last year, right before the pandemic, this is what I want, right before the pandemic, we, um, we were going into schools and actually I was in six schools in Richland One and uh, working with the teachers. And we were actually already had all of our Shark Tank, we call it Shark Tank, yeah. a Shark Tank ready and then the pandemic came. I mean, we had everything ready. So my question is, are we still gonna do that? Because the director from Richland One in Columbia contacted me and asked me, was Jess Carolina still doing that program? Cause she has some teachers that needed some help in her entrepreneurship. So that's the question I have for you. Absolutely, and I, I can take that question, Dave. Um, if you, there are any teachers that need help with um, the classroom competitions, uh, please let them know that they can reach out to me. The program is still running. Everything uh, is running like normal um, after the merger. So um, I think our biggest push this year is to communicate and try and get contacts for all the teachers, <coughs> excuse me, that are teaching S Carolina in the state. So we can, um, sorry, I'm getting a little cough in my throat. <laughs> it's that season uh, so we can communicate with them to help them with whatever they need so if they do want to do classroom competitions yes Carolina is still running we can give them activity guides um, and sponsors and everything like usual yeah. Norma do you have any um, any anecdotes or activities that you kind of lean on that you could share with us I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> ah, I know. Yeah, you put me on the spot. I have to think about that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's fine. The things that I, do. I just like learning from other teachers. Um, I guess when I... I guess my one thing I ask, you know, what... Like, from what is a problem, you know, I like that and how to solve it. So I kind of go in with that, what, what, name some problem, kind of what you did, and then how to solve it. So I go like that, go from there like that. <laughs> Those make the best businesses, right? Solving yeah, a problem. Yeah, yeah. And it's amazing what they find out. Well, thank you for sharing. Like I said, I didn't want to put you on the spot, but I, I, I like to learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... Alrighty, everyone. Well, thank you so much, Norma, for being here. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed it, and I feel like I learned a lot in the last hour. Um, but yeah, we can go ahead and wrap it up. We will have another um, PD in the spring, Norma, so stay tuned. I'll send an email out to all the teachers like I did before, um, and then just kind of follow up from this. I will send an email that will include resources, um, Dave's or David's presentation, for example, in the list of instructions and then also the recording if you wanted to rewatch this. And also your prize. I'll email you about your prize. Okay. Good, good, good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Thank you all so much. Thanks, Norma. Thank you. You're welcome. Y'all have Thank a good you, Norma. You have a great Thanksgiving. All right. Y'all have a blessed Enjoy your holidays. Thank you. Bye bye.